In this video, I'm going to talk about magnitude of uh, velocities as well as the direction of velocities. So, uh, a typical question looks something like this. A particle moves such that its position x, y at time t is given by x equals to 3t squared, y equals to 2 minus t cubed. And then ask you to find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant velocity. So there are two things you need to find. One, magnitude. Two, direction. Okay. The, the question gave us an equation for x. x equals to 3t squared. This is not velocity. x is not velocity. Okay. x is displacement. Doesn't matter what it is. Okay. Don't bother. What you do need to find out is velocity. V. There are two types of velocities. There's velocity in the x direction and then there's velocity in the y direction. Okay. So we have x equals to 3t squared and we have y equals to 2 minus t cubed. To find velocity, what you need to do is to differentiate this equation. Differentiate this with respect to t. So vx is really just differentiate x with respect to t, dx dt. And what do you get from there? Differentiate 3t squared. Okay, differentiate 3t squared. You will get 6t. Okay, that's it. Now, how do we find velocity in y? You need to differentiate y with respect to t. And the answer for that one is differentiate 2, I get 0. Differentiate minus 3t squared, I get minus, oh, sorry, minus t cubed, I get minus 3t squared. Okay, the answer is just simply minus 3t squared. Okay, so this is your velocity in y, this is your velocity in x. Notice that I still have t. Okay, I still have a t here. Uh, when why do we need to use that? Obviously, because the question tells you t equals to two, so you're gonna have to substitute in t sooner or later to find your velocities. Okay, now this is where I recommend substituting t much earlier. So since t is two, we know that. Therefore, v x is equals to six times two, which is twelve. Okay, v y is minus 3 times 2 squared, which is minus 12. Yeah? We should also give the units here. So no units are given in the question, okay? But um, usually your time is in seconds. So since there's no units, I'm just going to call it units per second. Okay, this one, units per second. Fair enough. So we have vx equals to 12, vy equals to negative 12. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to repeat that over here for simplicity's sake. Vx equals to 12, vy equals to minus 12. How do we make use of this information? The two things that you want to find. Magnitude, direction. Let's do magnitude first. Magnitude of v can be written like this. Okay, V with two straight lines beside this modulus of V, just says magnitude. The formula is just simply this. Vx squared plus Vy squared. Remembering the formula is not difficult. Come on, just takes a bit of memory work. Okay, And then I've already calculated my value for Vx, which is 12 squared. I've calculated my value for Vy, which is minus 12 squared. I square it the whole thing, and then I'll end up with my answer. Okay, what the answer is, let's use our calculator to find out. 16.97 units per second. Okay, that's V. Done. Next thing, direction. Okay, this is where many students make mistakes. Look at this. Your Vx is a positive number. Let me just draw the normal coordinate axis that you're familiar with. This is the x direction, this is the y direction. So, question. If x is positive, is it going to the right or is it going to the left? If x is positive, it's going to the right. If x is negative, it's going to the left. So this is positive, this is negative. Similarly for vy, this here is positive, this one here is negative. Am I correct? So look, vx is 12. Well, what does that mean? Let me clean this up. Okay, Vx is 12, positive, right? Which means Vx is going this direction, to the right. What's Vy? Vy is minus 12, it's negative, okay, minus 12. 
which means vy is going this direction, vy. If the x direction is to the right, the y direction is down, what do you think the overall direction is? The overall direction is obviously this way. Okay, so I know that my v is in, this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. My v is in the fourth quadrant. How do I find the direction in the fourth quadrant? I need to find this angle here, theta. Okay, so direction tangent theta equals to vx over, sorry, vy over vx. Okay, this is vy over vx, which is equal to minus 12 over 12, and I get minus 1. Okay, so I want to find the basic angle. How do I find the basic angle? Okay, basic angle is... Okay, basic angle is... Uh, let me just clean this one up. The answer for this one was minus 1, so I'll just write minus 1 here, equals to minus 1. Basic angle is tangent inverse of 1. Okay, we should ignore the negative sign when we're finding the reference angle, so it's just 1. This would be 45 degrees. Yeah? Now look at which quadrant it is. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4, it is in quadrant number 4. So, my answer for theta is, is in quadrant number 4, which means it is negative 45 degrees. Okay, negative 45 degrees. But let's not use a negative number. Instead, let's take 360 minus 45 to give us a positive answer. Okay, and that answer would be 315 degrees. Okay, this is your answer for direction. Now, here's the question that you might be asking. Shouldn't there be two angles for tangent inverse? Because I know that tangent inverse, oh, sorry, for tangent. For tangent, I should have an angle in 1, I should have an angle in 3. Now, since this is negative, I should have a quadrant uh, angle in 2 and an angle in 4. Why do I only have one answer? This answer here is for quadrant 4. What happened to the answer in quadrant 2? What happened to this? Is it not needed? Yes, it is not needed. Why is it not needed? Because you know that your direction, Vx is positive, Vy is negative, it has to be in quadrant 4. You cannot write your answer in quadrant 2. That answer is wrong. Okay, You cannot write this one, it's wrong. This is because the directions have all been fixed to begin with. So that's important to remember. Okay, In your finding your uh, direction for the resultant velocity, that's what we found here, the direction, there is only one answer. Only one answer. And that is important to remember. So this is how you find magnitude and direction of resultant velocity.